Hello, I'm Jason. Welcome to Smarter in Science, where we're going to take a few minutes of your time and learn together about something truly amazing in the realm of science. Today we're going to talk about the amazing discovery of infrared radiation. There's a really cool story behind infrared radiation and how it was discovered, and I'm going to share that with you today. The first thing is, let's talk a little bit about what is infrared radiation. And that is basically the type of, of, of light, the type of invisible light that we associate with heat that's given off by an object. So here are a couple of examples of that. Here's a space shuttle that's just come in from the atmosphere. It's gotten very, very hot. Notice the underside of the ship is kind of has the reddish colors and the whitish, the whitish colors, where the top of the ship is blue, bluish colors. So what this means, obviously, is the bottom of the ship is hotter, and when something is hotter, it radiates more infrared radiation, and so those why the that's why the colors are red there, whereas the top of the ship is not as hot, and in this picture it's represented by blue because it's not radiating as much in the infrared there on the top of the ship. Here's a picture of a house, and you can see sort of the same thing here. Most of the house, for instance, the the, the roof here is a bluish color. And that means that there's not very much heat coming out of the roof there, but it's nicely insulated there. But the ridge line here at the top of the house, the windows, the doors, things like that, it's very hard to insulate those. So you see the heat coming through the windows and the doors, and that's why you see the red uh, there, because the heat's coming from the inside of the house out, and you see that in the infrared. Okay, As I said before, the discovery of how this radiation behaves and how it was discovered historically is really, really neat, and we're going to talk about that right now. So I'd like to introduce you to somebody, if you've never heard of him. He's a famous scientist. His name is William Herschel, lived from 1738 to 1822. Now this picture of our sun is a modern picture. Of course, Herschel never saw the sun as it is in this picture here from a, from a high-power telescope or a satellite as we see it today. But basically, he spent a great deal of time studying light from the stars with a telescope that he used in his day. And what he did, one of the things he did, was he would put these filters in front of the telescope, different color filters, red filters, yellow filters, blue filters, to uh, basically filter the light coming from the sun so that he could study it in his telescope. And just from his interaction with the telescope, he started to realize that he thought the red light from the sun, when he would isolate the red light, seemed to be hotter than the other colors as he would isolate them with his filters. Now this wasn't a scientific experiment, this was just something he was noticing, so he decided to investigate further. Now even back in Herschel's day, um, the scientists of the time were well aware that sunlight can be broken down or was composed of a whole host of colors of the rainbow there. Um, and he knew all about prisms that could do that job. So he knew that sunlight was a mixture of all the colors of the rainbow. And he knew that he could take white light and split it up into the different colors. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. So what he wanted to do was scientifically see if any of these colors coming from the sun actually had a higher temperature or did they all behave the same. So in order to do that, he decided to set up an actual experiment to test and see if they were all the same or if any of the colors were hotter or colder than any of the other ones. Now here's what we have as sort of a, an artist rendition of, him, of, of Herschel in his laboratory. And you can see the sunlight coming in, being split by the prism and forming a rainbow down here. Now in 1800, he devised his experiment to see if, if the different colors of the rainbow actually had different temperatures. And the way he did that is he took thermometers of the day. You can actually see the thermometers in this illustration here. And what he did is he blackened the bulbs of the end of those thermometers. And that's because black objects absorb the most energy from, from light. So what he did is he blackened the bulbs so they would absorb the sunlight the best. And then what he did is he would put these bulbs in the different colors of the rainbow. And you can actually see this right here is the actual prism that he used in his experiment. So what he would do is he would put one of the thermometers in the various colors, and then he, he had the other two thermometers that would sit outside the spectrum, on, in other words, where there is no color, where there is no rainbow, and he would do that as controls. So he could see at the same time what the color of the, of the different shade that he was investigating was, what the temperature was, and at the same time he could see what these outside thermometers were doing just as a control. 
Now, what did Herschel find from his experiment? Well, he found conclusively that violet, which is over here on one end of the rainbow, had the coolest temperature. And as he moved the thermometers up closer to red, they progressively got warmer and warmer and warmer as he got to red. And red color was the hottest color of the visible spectrum. And that's what he was noticing with his telescope all those years ago. He just proved it with thermometers. Now, interestingly, by complete accident, he had the other two thermometers outside of the visible spectrum there, right? But what he noticed was actually amazing. What the whole point of the story is, is that when he placed the thermometer just outside of the red part of the spectrum, so there is no rainbow right here, there is no visible light in this region, but the thermometer, that, the thermometer that was placed right here was actually hotter than all of the other colors in the experiment. And I'll let that sink into you right there. He has a thermometer that's not even on any of these colors at all, and it was reading hotter than everything else. So he discovered by complete accident, and that's what makes the story so interesting, that beyond the red light of the visible spectrum that we see exists an invisible light that was hotter than all of the visible colors that he could see. So he obviously thought this was a very important discovery. He actually named these invisible rays calorific rays, which to me sounds a little bit like calorie, which sounds a little bit like heat to me. That's, that's where the, the, the origin of that word comes from. He called them calorific rays. Today we actually call it infrared radiation that William Herschel discovered. So here you can see kind of a mock-up of what Herschel did. This is not his actual setup, but it's pretty close. You have a prism here, sunlight goes through, it splits the sunlight into the shades of the rainbow, and different thermometers are at the different uh, colors here. So you can see the blue thermometer is reading right around 80 degrees or so. The yellowish greenish uh, one is over here around 83 degrees. And over here, this thermometer is actually just on the border of red. It's actually mostly not even in the red part of the spectrum. It's mostly where there is no, no actual rainbow. And it's reading up around 86. So you can see the nice progression in the temperature as you go from the violet to the red end. And this last thermometer isn't even really in the spectrum, and yet it reads the highest temperature of all. All right, so now we'll zoom out to the big picture. What Herschel did, really, was he totally by accident discovered infrared radiation, which is an invisible part of the spectrum that we cannot see with our eyes. So here's kind of a graphic showing you that. This is what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. Now this part that we can see with our eyes is the rainbow of all visible things that you can see. And those are just a range of frequencies here, you can see it down here, right around here, that is basically what your eyes are sensitive to. And what Herschel discovered is that, is that if you go just past red here, you end up in the infrared region. Our eyes cannot see infrared light, but it's just another frequency of electromagnetic uh, radiation that has a slightly longer wavelength. Or you can think of it as a lower frequency, same deal. And by the way, when I say electromagnetic radiation, that's, that's another uh, topic for another day, but basically it's just a wave that travels that has an electric field component and a magnetic field component. And together they form a wave that we can, at least in the visible spectrum, we can sense it. Now if you zoom out more than that, we all know that we have microwave ovens, and that's just another band of the electromagnetic spectrum. We have radio waves to talk to each other on the radios. And then if you go uh, to the other end of the visible spectrum, not notice we have red light and then we have infrared. Here we have the violet part of the spectrum, and on the other side we have ultraviolet, which of course we cannot see, but that's what you worry about when you get sunburned. And then we have x-rays and gamma rays, which are the highest frequencies and the highest energies of all of these things. Notice x-rays are also very high frequencies. That's why you have to watch out when you get too many x-rays over the course of your lifetime. So the bottom line here is that we know that infrared and visible light is only a very small part of this entire thing that's a continuum. It's basically, you know, a lot of people think, oh, we have radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, and they all think of them as different things, but really all of those different names are just different segments of all of this radiation that's really all the same stuff. It's just this is lower frequency here, which means more broad wiggling, and then you get higher and higher frequency as you go up the spectrum, but it's all the same stuff. It's all electromagnetic waves. The final thought I want to leave you with here is, we cannot see infrared light. We didn't even know it existed until it was discovered completely by accident, which is what I enjoy so much about this story. So I'll leave you with one final thought. 
What other aspects of our universe are we ignorant of just because we can't see it and just because we haven't blindly stumbled upon it yet? If Herschel hadn't done that experiment, we, we may have been delayed in understanding electromagnetism or infrared light for who knows how many more years. And, and it's all because we can't see infrared, right? Now to, Nowadays we're talking about in, in modern physics things like time dilation and dark matter and dark energy and things like that, and other dimensions, things that we can't experience, we can't see them. But my question to you is how many more, or I should say how much more rich is the universe in things that we just can't even comprehend just because we can't see them? And how many more hundreds of years need to go by before we accidentally stumble upon the next big thing that will enlighten us and help us to understand science that much more deeply? That's all I have for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you come to understand, as I do, that any topic in science, even if it seems complicated, can be totally and completely understood if we take it, every topic, and break it down into step-by-step -step manageable pieces.